Okay, what do you what do you think is the biggest learning when you are moving to a product leader? I think the most important skill for any anybody who wants to move up the ladder as a product manager to a leader would be the impact you create. So, irrespective of what the ownership size is, try to make make sure you maximize the impact you create uh, as you are moving up the ladder. I felt at least in my experience this was one of the toughest part because coming from an individual PM to become a leader, it's a lot of skills, right? A lot of soft skills coming into the picture. Once you become a leader, then the mindset shift that you need to have is there is nothing defined there is no path defined for people so you should be the one who is responsible to define the path okay when you are in a team meetings as you want to grow in the ladder don't just talk about your product don't just don't focus on your product just think from overall business you start taking the lead like if you see anything else and any opportunity just bring out I mean, don't be hesitate initially you are uh, working on a strategy which was set by someone but now you are actually defining what the strategy of your product is and what's the uh, next one to two years uh, looks like and what the roadmap looks hey like hey everyone uh, welcome back to our podcast everything product in this podcast we talk about uh, product management concepts and uh, latest tech insights this is srinath this is sit saladi Hi everyone this is funny wooru Hey uh, for all the viewers out there who are watching our podcast for the first time um please don't forget to subscribe uh, we bring in uh, the speakers from industry leading companies as well as talk talk about the uh, latest uh, tech insights and product management concepts out there uh, so with that being said uh, we'll dive into the topic for today uh, which is probably relevant for uh, many of the experienced folks uh, the pms out there and one of the challenges uh, that we have seen from experience pms is growing up the ladder uh, so funny i mean i would like to start with you uh, from your experience can you uh, talk about this uh, challenge yeah definitely shinan so let's let's take a step back right so when we think about a product management role there's different levels so you typically start at a product manager one where you don't have any experience but you start to drive smaller features and then you grow towards a pm2 where you start to drive individual products and then you go towards a senior product manager where you probably have multiple engineering teams and multiple products that you're looking into and then you grow towards a group product manager and a director that is where you will start to become driving multiple teams and then you have people reporting to you you're probably looking at products which are globally expanding for your company etc and what we have typically seen is when people are growing from that senior product manager level to a product leader that is what a huge jump is and there is a huge mind shift that product managers need to take into consideration so that is where a lot of people get stuck for more than 5 years more than 8 years etc in order to jump that ladder and let's just let's focus on that today and see like what are all the mindset shifts a product manager need to take into consideration so maybe sidhu um let's let's start with you what do you what do you think is the biggest learning when you are moving to a product leader yeah so as you said funny you know as you grow through right so your responsibilities and the level of skills you apply keep changing right and you have to uh, kind of uh, start acquiring new skills and stack these new skills as you move, move up the ladder and also as you are moving from an associate product manager product manager to a lead group director vp and cpo right so the ownership area changes right so maybe as a as a associate product manager you are uh, working on a specific enhancement maybe on at a product manager level you are working on a feature right or on a senior product manager you are working on a problem area a lead or a group product manager you are maybe managing a portfolio of products whereas a vp of product you are actually owning the whole uh, mission vision of the company and where the company the trajectory and all of that stuff so the 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 size of the ownership keeps changing as you move up the ladder right but don't equate that to impact i would say right so the more products you own doesn't mean you are impacting the company or moving the goal forward in that way so i think the most important skill for any anybody who wants to move up the ladder as a product manager to a leader would be the impact you create so irrespective of what the ownership size is try to make make sure you maximize the impact you create uh, as you are moving up the ladder so the impact will take you uh, places is what i believe in so that's the most important skill which you want to acquire as you are uh, uh, moving up the ladder and you know show that impact to the leadership so that they can give you more opportunity and more chances Awesome. That is true. 
I think you guys kind of touched on about that. I mean, especially as we grow in this ladder, one of the things changes the responsibilities in each role, right? That's when from an individual contributor, you need to also start leading the teams, bringing the teams together, um, which is pretty important as well, because it's not just about uh, what your product is. It's you're thinking about the whole product portfolio. You're talking about the business portfolio, uh, which is pretty important. That's where I think a lot of this uh, people management skills, uh, this stakeholder management skills all come together. Yep. That's also a mind shift I would add, right? Because you're not thinking about your product in itself. You actually start to think whether whatever you're doing is actually moving the needle for the company or not. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And also, right, like normally when you are an ICPM, right, you are actually trying to figure out what is the best way to do certain artifacts, right? Doing the roadmap, trying to defining the KPIs, the OKRs and all. But at a, a product leader position, you are trying, you are basically helping them get to that spot where they create all of these ad artifacts. And also you are creating the systems um, so that PMs can sit into them and, you know, execute as you were executing before. So it's all, all about empowering teams, right? So I feel that it's very hard to babysit, uh, you know, people in each and every aspect of what they do. So if you create powerful systems, that's when you are empowering the team towards uh, success and also the value and impact which they are creating. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So that's basically like leading your to team, like as an IC towards like motivating your team where you don't exactly sit in each and everything, but you coach your team to like think in the right direction, set the right principles so that they can follow the right steps and help the team and help the product grow. That's true. So, you know, as you're seeing at a product leader level, right? So they, you you also see a lot of gaps that might be in uh, there in the team, right? So there might be certain skills where people might not be, you know, that skillful on. So you have to basically, you are a person who's actually looking at all of that and trying to either uh, fill those uh, gaps with newer uh, PMs or maybe uh, helping the existing PMs upskill in the areas which they are. So I think you have that 30,000 foot level to understand the team dynamics and how are things going on. Yeah, and I felt at least in my experience, this was one of the toughest part because coming from an individual PM to become a leader, it's a lot of skills, right? A lot of soft skills coming into the picture and it's not easy and few things which I felt, uh, again, my mentors really helped, especially on how to navigate that path. But one thing which really helped me in bringing teams together um, uh, and bringing, uh, motivating the team and all that stuff is, uh, this may sound simple, but taking all the tech teams um, uh, for a lunch, like often, like once every month, I used to just take them to develop that like trust with them, bringing the teams together, showing that uh, that leadership, uh, taking that lead from the front, uh, bringing people together, I felt uh, really helped in earning the trust. And I felt like initially it was just me and my tech team. But as I grew, it was like, oh, bringing everyone together, which was not easy. Anything uh, from uh, any of your experiences that you guys want to share that really worked out? Yeah, I, I think um, uh, that's, you know, when, when you are working individually, it's a different ball game, right? You know uh, what to do and you know your areas where you're concentrating on. But when you're leading a team, right, it's, it's you're making people work, right? And it, it's not easy to manage people, right? So I think that's where you have to earn the trust of the team and also be there when the team needs you uh, rather than just... Uh, ordering people of what what you want them to do right yeah i want to add one thing there so this is one of the things that i learned from one of my mentors and leaders right once you become a product leader you basically do all the boring or the grunt work and then you enable your teams to do interesting stuff because you want to motivate your team and tell that hey you have awesome things to do you need to deliver and then do all the grunt work. It could be as simple as like hosting a lunch. Like it's not easy because you're finding the right place, coordinating everyone's schedules and stuff, what cuisines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those team building activities is what you would be responsible for, so that your team is motivated to do certain things. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And I think one thing which also helped me that my mentor shared was. Okay, when you're in a team meetings, uh, as you want to grow in the ladder, don't just talk about your product. Just don't focus on your product. Just 
think from overall business you start taking the lead like if you see anything else and any opportunity just bring out I mean, don't be hesitate to that's when people think that oh Srinath is not just thinking about his portfolio but is thinking about how it impacts the overall business that basically that really helps when uh, especially when leaders are watching about when they want to give opportunities oh okay he is the one who can take like lead from the front um so that mm. one was a very uh, handy tip for me as well awesome let me um, switch to another learning that i had right so this is about following the strategy of the team or the product to driving the strategy so when we start our careers right what typically happens is there is a strategy defined by your leadership so you start thinking about that uh, uh, strategy you start building products and features on top of that and then you deliver it so now once you become a leader then the mindset shift that you need to have is there is nothing defined there is no path defined for people so you should be the one who is responsible to define the path and many times it might not be like 0 to 1 because you might be uh, taking someone else strategy and extending it for the next year or two uh, so you can probably start there and then start to build that path for the team so that's a big mindset shift as well what, what do you guys think yeah i feel that the aperture changes right as you are moving up the ladder so initially in your initial roles right as an apm pm you know the aperture might be 6 to 6 months uh, to 1 year but as you are growing up the ladder if you are becoming a director of product it might be like 1 to 2 years and maybe even a vp or a cpo it might be 3 years aperture right that's you know that's how you are defining what the strategy looks like so you are working at a different level of what the strategy should look like so initially you are uh, working on a strategy which was set by someone but now you are actually defining what the strategy of your product is and what's the next 1 to 2 years uh, looks like and what the roadmap looks like so i think you should also be very comfortable with uncertainty that comes with the um, uh, becoming a product leader and also defining a strategy i would like to uh, talk about a recent uh, post that i saw on linkedin when they were talking about this uh, the product management ladder within google right so the way uh, i read that was as a um, like a new pm or a fresh pm um, so google basically gives um, the clear problem statement as well as solution so what a product manager expected to do is just take that and go and execute and the second uh, role is the senior product manager that's where okay a, a problem is clearly defined but a solution is defined at a high level a senior product manager at google is expected to go dive into that in detail and figure out what that um, solution will be building on top of that the third one which is of more of a senior role um, which is a group product manager in google that's where um, i learned that they are not even given a problem statement they are not even given a solution so you just have to go figure out what that problem statement is i mean navigating through that whatever the landscape of the product or the country whatever that is and come up with your own innovative solution so that was a pretty interesting to read and i think that all emphasizes that we all are talking about yeah another thing right um, people skills so a lot of times what i observe is when you're driving smaller features and stuff you will not get a lot of pushback like people will be like okay you're changing certain buttons certain colors you're changing some flow etc please go ahead yeah but as you grow right you're making way bigger decisions you're bringing no new pro- product portfolios into picture you're introducing new products into the market that is where you'll get a lot of pushback like why do we need to do it now is it the right time do we have enough funding do we have enough resources etc so as you grow towards you uh, towards a leader you need to understand how to navigate all of this bring everyone into the into your thought process and then start to build a whole new team start to drive people to to say hey why do you have to stay in this company because this is the biggest reason you have to stay in this company so motivating that uh, thought process within the people is the biggest thing that you need to learn yeah and and just to add to what you're saying funny so it it always also uh takes a lot of effort for you to uh, manage people up right like you know uh, managing your directors and vps and also you know managing your stakeholders and people across different teams because you know 
at some point you are in a position where you are maybe pitching an idea or saying um, uh, proposing a new vertical for your business and um, this all comes handy when you are doing that otherwise if you don't have any connections across and it's very hard for getting that buy in right because people need that trust right you know if if you have already talked to them and known them and people know your work and also believe in you it's easier to get that buy in otherwise it's very hard to get that buy in internally inside the team i want to give an anomaly there sidhu so for example let's say you are a first time founder okay it might be exceptionally difficult for you to get funding because you don't know whether you are i mean the uh, whoever is funding you they don't know whether you are someone who is trustworthy you are someone who is very persistent to build a product get the customers etc because there is a lot of barriers that you go through that is the same problem i see here too if you are someone who is in the early stages you don't know how to navigate you might be giving up if if it's beyond a certain threshold but as you continue to grow through you learn to navigate those pushbacks and make sure whatever happens you deliver the product and that's what um, an experienced founder would do that right you might fail first two times but third time you know that hey these are all the hurdles that i'm going to get this is going to i'm going to solve and they do it in a very minimal time yeah. yeah and it's also very important to have those quick wins right so initially when i started in a company it was very hard for me to get the buy in for everybody even from engineering sometimes right but once you uh, get that first or second release right with the team there's a complete mind shift right people now start believing you more people know that you can get things done for them and i think you have that you gain that respect and it's easier to convince people for new uh, other ideas once you have done that so i think getting that in is really really important yeah i think this is where all that influencing people with authority the people management skills and all the stuff uh, come into the picture last thing i want to add to the same topic right is being an enabler like product managers are enablers that is the biggest thing that we do we enable the engineering teams to uh, find and deliver the right products we enable the design team to make design decisions as fast as possible based on the customer requirements we make sure the operations and marketing teams um, enable them to make their process faster so as long as you got that confidence from your stakeholders including all of these teams that you are actually enabling them your process will become much more faster right yeah and and let's let's also switch gears and um, talk about execution right because execution is also very important for uh, a product manager and that keeps changing as you progress in your career so initially you know imagine you are in a product manager senior product manager you are maybe very close to the team trying to be part of every agile ceremony the team has right and you know try to influence people and all of that stuff but as you are moving up the ladder you might not have time to go to every stand up every uh, session of the uh, product right because you'll have a bunch of products under you so that's when i think you are uh, moving more towards uh, focusing um, more on execution towards focusing stuff into delegate delegating it to other people and how can they be uh, more resourceful or um, better at executing certain things at that uh, parallel or product yeah that's pretty important as well because as a product leader you cannot be on every meeting you cannot be on every sprint call scrum call i mean you expect your uh, i mean report is to lead that i think um, that's a pretty important differentiation as well want to add something there right like you move from execution to delegate but own i want to add the tag there delegate but own because you trust your team and delegate a certain thing that they would do it but just because you delegated doesn't mean you shouldn't look at it you still own the entire thing if if you are um, if the person who is responsible to deliver it is owning a certain metric which means you also own that metric you you don't just hand it over to them and then just leave it you still continue to think about that you still enable the other person to make that happen yeah no that's a good uh, on differentiation because i think as a leader you will be kind of the front face with the senior leadership and you need to exactly know okay well, if something did not happen why did not happen you cannot say oh i'll ask my team and let you know or oh i don't know i have asked my team to look into it so we cannot do all that um i want to switch gears into uh, uh, another skill or challenge that we have seen is stakeholder management the relationship management right which is i feel like um, as an individual pm or an, an experienced pm probably 
uh, they may be very good at stakeholder management when they are working with the tech uh, design teams. But one thing which is uh, often challenging is building relationship beyond your teams, because when you are trying to build products, I mean your dependencies may be across the product portfolios across the companies. That's where I feel like all this relationship build uh, comes not just within your team, but uh, across product portfolios, especially example, like if you have a dependency for your product from a completely different org who doesn't even report to you, how do you make that even happen, right? I feel like that's where relationship building uh, comes into the picture. It's not just uh, always about work, just having a casual one-on-ones to understand uh, what's going on in each other world and how one can help each other and all that stuff uh, really come handy. You guys have yeah. any thoughts on that? I can share a tip which one of my um, uh, directors were, uh, shared me in, in my early PM career life, right? So he was like, always make sure you are not eating lunch alone. So, you know, either go go to lunch with an engineer or somebody who is a counterpart or somebody, right? I think these, these are some relationship you developed over that over over time and um i know there's not just work right there's a lot, lot of personal relationship which you develop and uh, this is really helpful for you to get certain things done so you know i think that's a good tip for to follow right uh, make sure you talk to others try to understand what they're doing in their area and also share ideas across yeah actually i i want to add one more thing there right i'll give you an example here so let's take your operations team um, as you start your career and working with the operations team, you basically sit with them, understand what they want, and then you build what they want. Okay. Five years down the line, the table turns. Typically what happens is you tell your operations team that, dude, I'm going to do this. Trust me, it's going to make your life better. So when you can actually tab- uh, turn the table, that is when you became a senior product manager to a product leader. Because at that point, you know the business, you know what your operations team want, then all you're trying to do is telling them, dude, I'm navigating that path for you. Trust me, it's going to make your life better. That's right. Awesome. I just wanted to ask a quick question, right? So if if you were to choose between impact and title, what would you choose and why? Impact for sure. Um, let me add a couple of thoughts there, right? So let's say you want to get a promotion, okay? Uh, In order for you to get a promotion, the thing that gets evaluated is what are you doing right now that enables you to get there? Or what are you doing right now that is giving me as a director a confidence to promote you? The thing that gives me that confidence is are you actually thinking about the impact Or are you actually creating that impact for the company? The moment you can do that, you are a yes from everyone there in that panel to give you a promotion. Srinath, what do you think? Yeah, I would choose impact as well uh, because I feel like, at least in my experience, that's what motivates me. I feel like when I'm driving impact across multiple product portfolios, I'm seeing the results. I feel like role title is, I mean, again, that changes uh, across every company. But how you go and sell yourself will be based on impact that I would create. Yeah, yeah. So I agree that impact impact is something which uh, we want to focus on. But I, I also feel that title is also important, right? Because uh, title is important because, you know, it changes the way people uh, view at you for uh, employment opportunities, right? If you're trying to move to a different company, title matters, right? And also if rec- recruiters are searching uh, for certain candidates, they look by title, so that's also important. So I think it's always uh, focus on impact, impact, but also if you have an opportunity to get that next title, make sure you get that. So that's how that's how I would uh, put 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 that. Yeah, I'd like to summarize uh, what we discussed today. Right, uh, as we all discussed, I mean, it's not easy. You need to change your mindset. And the first thing that we talked about was moving on from focusing on your role to focusing on impact. So it's not just about your role, but you're talking about the overall impact of the product. And the second thing that we talked about was leading your team, bringing multiple teams together, motivating them. It's not just about your specific work stream, but you're thinking about uh, bringing the leadership across the product. And the third thing which we talked about was 
I mean, the focusing, not just focusing on your growth, but overall team's growth. Because uh, when you start as a IC, I mean, experienced PM or ICPM, if you're talking about a specific work stream, you're talking about the, moving the needle on that one metric. But as a leader, you are expected to move the metrics across the product portfolio, not just your work stream. And fourth thing that we talked about was the following, uh, not following the strategy, but also defining the strategy. And you are expected to define the strategy, whatever that would be, like, for example, a three-year, five-year vision. You need to drive that strategy from the front and be able to bring a, bring people together to drive that strategy. So you're not just following a thing that is already there. And fifth one we talked about was execution versus delegation, right? So as an experienced PM, you may be just executing your work stream, uh, but as a leader, you're expected to delegate tasks across different product managers. But I think Pani also brought a good point about owning. So you're not just giving them and forgetting about it, but also you own, uh, you take that accountability of the results, which is pretty important as well. I think last but not least we talked about was uh, this stakeholder management and relationship building. The stakeholder management, when as an experienced PM, we may be just working with our specific tech team to go and ex- deliver that. But as a product leader, you are expected to develop relationships beyond your teams, mm-hmm. beyond your product portfolios. That way, whenever you have dependencies uh, and whenever you want to have a seat at the table, uh, especially across different product portfolios, that's where all these relationship builds come in. Um, I think those are some of the things uh, probably um, that every uh, experienced PM can explore. Uh, with that being said, uh, we'll end the topic for today. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you. Thank you all.